Ninja! <laughs> <laughs> Good? Mm -hmm. So our travels in Utah has finally taken us to Capitol Reef <laughs> National Park. Um, we weren't planning to come today, but because in Moab it is raining, we made the two and a half hour trip out here mm -hmm. for today. So we have a few things on our list and we'll show you around as first time people here at the National Park. I love Utah. <laughs> Let's go. So our first trail of the day and our first stop in the National Park is the Cassidy Trail. So we're technically walking the Grand Wash Trail, which is going to then divide, like I want to say three fourths of a mile in to the Cassidy Trail. Cassidy Trail um, goes to the Cassidy Arch and we will tell you why it's so famous. The trail is definitely longer than what I anticipated. I just feel like it's longer than 1.5 miles. It's a lot of elevation gain. And you can see it, like, I feel like we already walked a lot, but we obviously have a long way to go because it's over there. <laughs> um, so we're gonna keep on walking. People look like dots and we'll eventually make it over there sooner or later. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't take us all day. It is so so crazy. I'm so nervous with the wind and like I can't get too close to the edge But definitely worked out the hike up here. So the reason why it's called Cassidy Arch is because uh, Butch Cassidy, I think everyone knows him. He was a fugitive during the Wild West um, hid in these like canyons and, and the nooks and the crannies in here um, with the Sundance Kid so you know he was trying to get away from them sheriffs <laughs> but it's really cool so he hit up here which is why the arch is named after him i feel like though he probably didn't hide all the way up here because it's pretty flat i can imagine him hiding in like the nooks and crannies on our way up but this is pretty cool as of right now rob's not letting me go onto the arch so i guess he'll go alone we'll see we'll see What's the arch? The arch is awesome. It is definitely wider than what it looks like, um, but a lot of wind, so you just gotta be careful when you go over there. This is really, uh, this is really something special. Worth the hike up here? Um, worth the hike, definitely worth the hike. Rob, let me get <laughs> to the arch. Um, so he came by himself and then he basically said it was a lot wider than what it looked. He's estimating about like 20 feet of, of width. Um, so he then said it was okay. He gave you the green light. 
Um, so I'm standing on the arch. Still a little nervous, you know, yelling at him to get away from the edge. I stand in the middle, but very cool. I feel like if you come to this arch, you have to stand on it. Again, like, even if you have like some sort of fear, like me, it's still doable because you, you do have a lot of space. It's, it still feels very safe. Um, there's narrower, narrower like uh, trails coming up. So this is like one of the most space we've we've had um, on the trail so far. So if you're nervous on the arch, it's better, but the trail itself can get you a little nervous. <laughs> We're on the way back down. Three mile loop, baby. Three mile loop. You like my hair, guys? It's very windy up here. Beautiful, beautiful. I look like Eddie Munster. Who's that? Look it up, guys, and then you'll laugh. Right outside Cassidy Arch Trail, we come to the Fruta District where we can find the Gil um, Homestead. So there's a barn and there's like this place over here, a building that's still in use that they sell like souvenirs, pies, and things like that. Um, but this whole area is pretty cool. It's old. You hear the barn creaking, and it's because it was like built in 1906. Obviously, they renovated, um, restored a lot of it, just to show in the national park, like the cultural and the significance it had in the area of Mormon settlement, which kind of really reminds me of the Tetons and seeing the barns over there. So it has all a very similar look and feel, except this one is near Red Rocks rather than the Teton Mountains. So we're very excited for Pi. And the reason why I'm assuming why they settled here, because they do have orchards here and they actually grow fruit from like cherries to apricots to peaches. So like it's considered like, I know it's in the desert, but a desert oasis because they were able to grow fruits and things like that here. So they actually use the fruits in the pie. So let's hopefully fingers crossed there's some pie available. Let's go get pie. It's windy, it is chilly, but still a very much beautiful day with all the full foliage. And of course, we have to enjoy our pie outside. Um, originally, I wanted to share a pie with Rob. He got greedy. So we got two separate pies. I have apple for the season, and Rob has cherry because I think that he's still in summer mode. Let's open it. I don't know if anybody notices, but she has two sporks because she's so <laughs> hungry. This is uh <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. This was a very small community with a blacksmith shop and the schoolhouse behind us. It is currently closed, but you can take a peek and see how small it is, which is so crazy because you probably only fit like the most two handfuls of children in there. And I came from 
a school system with almost like 800 kids. So it's just so crazy to, to think about how times change and things like that. So we are leaving the Fruta district and we are gonna head to a, another trail and then kind of end our days doing like viewpoints and just taking it easy. So I'll see you there. We made it to the Hickman Bridge Trail. So we're gonna start walking that. If you hear a lot of behind me, there's a little stream going. So we're gonna walk. Rob's getting a little ornery, but we're gonna push through. <laughs> mistake guys I saw a tiny little bridge I thought it was Hickman's bridge apparently it's just his cousin's bridge <laughs> he did the same thing in Joshua tree <laughs> I started sending people back people were coming and I was like no this is the one and they're like oh my god this is so small I'm like I guess so <laughs> <laughs> Man, worst tour guide ever <laughs> We made it to the arch. It's huge. It's actually bigger than what I expected and kind of like saw on videos and pictures. And it's really awesome because it is like a like natural arch. They call it a bridge, but it is an arch and it's, it's all natural. Yeah. We are, are heading back on the trail and on our way back, there was this older couple who also thought the same thing as us, that this first little bridge was the actual Hickman's Bridge. So I wanna make it very clear, you're gonna come to a very tiny passing of a bridge. It is not it. Um, also not my fault, as we can see, <laughs> other people are making mistakes. <laughs> what you wanna do is keep on your left-hand side up the hill um, and you'll get a little bit elevation gain. But let's continue to walk back. The Capitol Reef. Capitol Reef. <laughs> I am exhausted. It's five, five miles, five miles tight, total five. Uh, we're done with the Hickman Trail. We're gonna go we'll get some overlooks and then uh, after that, grab a bite to eat. But uh, yep, it's getting dark and I need a nap. We are ending our day looking at viewpoints. So we are Panorama Point and near here is also Gooseneck and Sunset. Uh, so we're just gonna make our way through these viewpoints, enjoy the views and honestly like uh, trails, yeah you have to do trails but there's nothing like viewpoints. And you can really see the massiveness of Capitol Reef and <laughs> they describe Capitol Reef as a wrinkle on the earth and you could see the wrinkle it looks like the little wrinkles of canyons and cliffs the sun's like shining right on everything and it's just absolutely breathtaking our next viewpoint is gooseneck so all the way at the end of the trail you come to this big parking lot and it holds both gooseneck and sunset um a lot of people seem confused as to where sunset was we missed the sunset I think that the point of the sunset point is to actually see the sunset behind the mountains. So although sun sets at a particular time, you may want to arrive to an hour, an hour and a half before to sunset to actually watch the sunset. <laughs> so we completely missed that. It's okay. There's a whole bunch of clouds anyway, so the sun's hiding behind the clouds. Uh, but we're at Gooseneck and it's just, it's so breathtaking. It's so magical here. and. Again, like the wrinkle of the earth and the redness of all the rocks and the sun brightening up everything. It's just, it's so beautiful. Um, but at this point, we're not going to go to sunset because it's pointless. Um, we're going to go head into the town of Tori to have dinner there. And then after that, the intent is to start heading 
heading back to Moab, which is at that point might be three hours away. Um, so let's see. So we're here at a Mexican restaurant outside of Capitol Reef. I got a burrito. She got three tacos and uh, we also got guac. We always get guac though. That's the thing. That's our play. What a great time at this little Mexican place. Food was the delicious def definitely like authentic and you know the manager and owner are really nice um seems like a lot of tourists comes here got very busy real quick <laughs> yeah everybody was done at the park and got some mexican food i know it seems <laughs> like it because this restaurant's like literally right on the outskirts of the capitol reef and right in the beginning of tory which is the town next to the capitol reef here in utah um but as you can see it is a darkness upon us <laughs> And we're gonna start heading back to our hotel in Moab. Um, so stay tuned for more national parks coming in Utah. But for the time being, make sure that you please like, comment, and subscribe. And let's travel together in the next one. Bye. <laughs> I don't know if we're close or not. <laughs> this has been one heck of a trail so far.